You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you're new me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus: Runes Path. So, a new version, a uh, new build got released, and it included day two content for Torolf. So, what I plan to do is once I'm done with Runes Path, I'm going to go back to Torolf and show off uh, Route Two for him. I mean, not Route 2, Day 2 for him. So we can uh, kind of get caught up on more content. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Sit back and enjoy the video. And let's start Alarm Chan. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Alright, let's do it. The three of us sit down around the table. The sound of chairs scratching against the wooden floor reverberating through the room. I look in the direction of the table beside ours, where Miko sat during lunch. He's sitting there again, leaning on his paw and looking somewhere outside the window with a gloomy look on his snout. I wonder what they're going to serve for dinner. That lunch was so good. I'd expect something like that in some trendy lunch bar downtown. Not here. The table is just next to ours, and we're at the very end of the room, so it shouldn't bother anyone. Yes, even though the dishes were simple, the quality of everything was surprisingly high. The variety was also nice. I expected just one dish, or even simple sandwiches. Most of the staff left already, so this time we're likely to get reheated food. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Would you mind if we joined your, our table with that one? My friends are sitting there, too. Right into the cafeteria, so that shouldn't make a difference to anyone. I point in the direction of the other table, looking around at everyone at ours. Hmm, I see no problem with that. However, you should go and ask the other table if they don't mind it either. Sure thing. So, nobody here has anything against it? Yeah, <laughs> don't worry. Go ahead and ask them. Okay, that's great. I was sure there would be more persuading involved. I stand up from the table and walk to the other one, where Miko was sitting, and tap gently on his shoulder. He turns around, completely clearly surprised to see me. His ears perk up, and a cheerful smile appears on his snout. Carvin! What are you doing here? Would you mind it if we joined tables? Uh, this way we could all sit together. I wouldn't mind it at all. Quite the contrary, I would really like it. Is that okay, Bjorn? I don't want to speak for everyone here. <laughs> oh, why? Oh, why would I? That would be cool, actually. I nod. Wow, this really was very easy. I return to my table and wave at Coach, trying to get his attention. They see no problem with it either, so we can go ahead. Coach simply nods in response and stands up. Okay, everyone, help me move the table. Sure thing, Coach. We all stand up, lift the table, and join it with the other one. Hello there, hope you don't mind us joining. Of course not, the more the merrier. We were just talking about the, f about the facilities here. Were any of you in the swimming pool or sauna here yet? Yeah, we visited the pool with Devin. It's fine, not very big, but enough to get some speed. Oh, and there's quite a view from there. By the way, I believe that I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm Bjorn, studying neurology. Oh, good idea. How about we all introduce ourselves? I don't know most of you yet. I'm Rune, currently in the fourth year of my studies, neuroscience. Apart from that, I also play basketball and have a few other hobbies I try to cultivate whenever I have the time. I'm Travis, studying neuroscience too, but I'm in my first year. I moved to Norway from the US, but I'm half American, half Japanese. I like anime and JRPG games, Korean cuisine, and some good tea from time to time. Nothing better than a good cup of green tea. True, Japanese sencha is my reason to live. I'm more of a fan of matcha. I always start my day with one, but I wouldn't say no to sencha. Um, I'm Miko, and I study marine biology with a specialization in cetaceans. I'm a freshman, and I moved here from Finland, just like Carvin. I make music in my free time, and I like anime, too. Oh, yes. I believe we mostly know each other already. I'm Carvin, and as Miko just said, I moved here from Finland. I study cognitive science, and in my free time I dabble in photography, both digital and analog. So, I'm Lake, and like Miko and Carvin, I moved here from Finland. I'm a freshman too, only I study astrophysics. I'm happy to meet you all. I'm Jorgen, in the second year of astrophysics studies. I like literature, and I don't like noise. Everyone is looking at Coach expectantly. Only after a moment he understands that we're waiting for him to introduce ourselves to introduce himself to. That's what he gets for sitting with students, I guess. Um, so 
I'm Devin, I believe you all know me. I'm a coach at our university, and technically I'm here to supervise you. I moved here from the US less than a year ago, so I'm still just acclimating here. He is suddenly interrupted by the lady from the reception who came with our dinner. She greets us and starts, put and starts putting plates of food down on the table. First there's some soup, pea-colored and creamy, smelling of marjoram and thyme. Then a few dishes filled with various stuff, mashed potatoes sprinkled with dill, whole-baked carrots and veggie balls, and a jug of sauce. And finally, she puts down two full two platters full of pancaker, thin Norwegian pancakes topped with some dark blue jam and various fruits. Oh, are those blueberries? I love blueberries. Just don't eat all of them. There's eight of us here, Rune. Shush, you know I'm not like that. And he eats all of them. Hmm. I think it's Ansapa, Swedish pea soup. Interesting, we rarely have soups this thick. And veggie balls! Looks like we have a Swedish dinner today! Hmm, just as if we were eating in a Yukia restaurant. I've never been to one. Are they good? The food here looks delicious for sure. Well, they're not as good as this place, but for the price, the value is really good. Oh, I used to go there a lot back when I was in high school. I'd grab my books and go there to study, taking advantage of the unlimited coffee and refills they have there. You were going to Yukia to study. Those are words I never expected to hear from anybody. <laughs> You're really lucky you have them here. We had maybe one in the whole state. Oh, by the way, Carvin, any luck with the key? I gulp loudly, swallowing a huge chunk of carrot and start coughing. I didn't tell most of them about the key yet, and I didn't really intend to. I don't really like to talk about my failures and misfortunes. Uh, no luck there yet, unfortunately. Maybe the janitor will find it eventually, and I'll keep my eyes open too. Huh. What about your key, Carvin? Did you lose it somewhere? Yeah, after lunch it disappeared somewhere. Why? Did you by any chance find a key lying somewhere? No, unfortunately. Did they give you a spare one? No, they asked me to move to another room for today. It's not that bad, then. Good they had some spare rooms. No. No, they didn't have any. They asked me to move into someone else's room. Oh. And where are you staying? I don't know yet. Everyone goes silent for a moment. Hey, don't worry about it. I know I have some options, I just didn't decide yet. The mood quickly brightens and the light-hearted conversations continue as everyone goes back to eating. Lake acts shy at first, overwhelmed by the amount of new people, but warms up to them quickly and amuses everyone with stories from the dormitory, like the one about his roommate boiling sausages in an electric kettle. Bjorn manages to snatch some extra pancakes that Jorgen and Coach didn't want, while Rune ends up eating most of the blueberries despite his earlier words. Miko stays silent for most of the dinner, but I make some effort to include him in the conversation. Travis tells us a bit about Japan, Jorgen talks about a gallery in the nearest city that's apparently a must-see, and Devin tells us a bit about how life in the U.S. looks like. It's really great to be here with everyone. Go tag along with Rune and Coach. We get some of that, and we get some of that sweet, sweet boy action. Oh, that was good. Wow, swimming really made me hungry. Damn it, I'm actually yawning. Ah, fuck. Wow, swimming really made me hungry. Probably could have eaten anything and would have loved it. It was good, though. I can confirm that. I don't feel like doing anything now. I caught the big lazy. Rune leans back on the couch with his arms behind his head, crossing his legs. Devin is sitting next to him, looking out the window with his arms crossed on his chest. After dinner, we split from the rest and, and came to the common room to just chill together. Lake went with Jorgen to the lobby to play some table paw ball, and Miko disappeared somewhere with Bjorn just after we finished. I decided to tag along with those two instead. After all, I wanted to make some new friends here, and surprisingly, I feel relaxed with Rune and Coach. Even though initially they both seemed unapproachable, now that I got to know them and f I feel comfortable in their company, there's something calming about them. How did you like dinner, Carvin? I really liked it. It was good. They did a good job with it. I really liked it, just like, just like lunch. Yeah, they really know what they're doing. The vegetables are perfectly roasted, spicy, and still with a hint of sweetness. The sauce was a great match for the rest of the dish, too. Its slight acidity was a nice contrast with the savory veggie balls. Oh, and those pancakes. 
Sorry about the blueberries, by the way. I hope you both had some, too. Not really. Green looks at me with hope in his eyes. Maybe a few. Coach snorted loudly. By the way, I'm surprised that you decided to tag along with us. What do you mean? Most wouldn't want to hang out with a teacher. Thanks for sticking around. Coach gives him a disapproving look. No wonder, that was pretty blunt. To be honest, I didn't give it much thought before, but... If Coach feels comfortable with us, then why should I feel weird about it? How did you two become friends? When I moved to Norway, I didn't know anyone here. Not even one person. With just one bag of personal belongings, I rented a small flat in the city center. I started to look for a job and education. I thought that moving here from outside Europe would be harder. They allowed you to stay just like that? It had... I had it easy with the relocation since my mother was Norwegian. Here, citizenship is determined by the nationality of the parents, so I was born with a dual citizenship. I do have family here, but on one of the islands pretty far north. I was lucky enough to find an open position for a coach at a university, but beyond some casual chats with their teachers there, I found it really hard to get to know anyone. I quickly found out that while Norwegians are really nice, they tend to keep to themselves much more than Americans do. Rin was the first person I talked with beyond exchanging pleasantries. He heard that I recently moved to Norway, so after the first class I had with his group, he came to me and asked if I was liking it here. When he learned that I barely talked with anyone, he offered to take me on a tour through the, around the city, and I agreed. That's really nice of him. I probably wouldn't have the guts to do something like that myself. It turned, to, it turned out that he's a cool guy. Knowledgeable, too, so we started to hang out more often. Good to hear you found someone to help you acclimate here, Coach. I know it helps a lot. Meeting new people as a student is relatively easy. We're basically forced to spend a huge part of our time together and have to form bonds to get through our studies. And yet, I still had problems with that after moving here from Finland, which isn't even that different from Norway. I can imagine that for a foreigner from the U.S., it must be much harder. No need to be so formal. You can call me Devin. Okay, thank you, uh, Devin. How did it go for you? You moved from another country, too. Did you have any friends here already? No, I wanted to get out of my hometown, out of my country, and start anew. In the end, it turned out that Miko got admitted into the same university. He's my middle school friend. We haven't talked much since then, though. After moving here, I was mostly busy studying. I've made some friends along the way, though. Blake, for example. We live in the same dormitory. I met him in the kitchen once, and it turned out that we have a lot in common. In any case, I'm doing good. Don't worry. Yeah, that's good. You know, I really admire you both. It takes a lot of courage to leave everything behind and move abroad completely alone. In my case, there wasn't much to leave behind. My life has gotten much better since I moved here. I still have to settle down, maybe go and meet my neighbors, maybe find some clubs I could join or something like that. You two can't imagine how hard it is to make friends in your 30s. You know, I'm really happy you two are here with me. <laughs> What's this? Are you getting sentimental? I had to wait more than a month until I've seen you smile. You must, be, you must be in a really good mood. Maybe I am. If you ever need someone to show you the city, Carvin, you know where to look for me. By the way, Carvin, do you have a, does you have a Disharmony account? Oh yeah, sure. We exchange our usernames and Rune sends me a message saying hi. Not what I expected from him. But, do I really know him at all yet? His avatar is just his face cropped onto a cover art of an album I've heard of, but haven't listened to yet. I can't remember its name, but it's easily recognizable, a leafy pattern forming an optical illusion. It feels really nice to see his face in my contacts. I spend some more time talking, joking, and laughing, until finally both Devin and Rune get up and leave to their respective rooms. It's getting late, and the sun is already approaching the horizon, filling the room with a golden glow. I wish they hadn't left already. I really enjoy their company, too. I sit a while longer on the chair facing the window, lost in thoughts. Hmm. What's this? Oh, we're going to Ruin's room. I'm bound to go wow wow. Ooh, baby. Oh, Carvin! Did I space out again? I turn around and see Ruin approaching me. What are you up to? I'm just walking around, looking to see if anything is going on. Same as me, then. I stayed for a bit in my room, but got bored quickly. I didn't come to a camp. I didn't come to a camp to sit in my room by myself. That I can do any time. Even if the rooms here are really nice. Yeah. Although I wish I could enjoy mine. No. Oh, yeah. 
you don't really have yours for now. You can visit me sometime if you want. I'd much rather sit with you than alone. It's really nice of you, Rune. Well, there's nothing better to do. We could go there now if you want. Beats standing here anyway, doesn't it? I didn't have any other plans, so... Lead the way. Rune turns around and starts walking towards the residential part of the guest house. I follow him quietly, looking at his short but fluffy tail swaying behind, behind him in the rhythm of his steps. It's almost hypnotizing. Here we are. I take out my phone and save the room number to a quick note. Okay, come on in. Rune opens the door, which he apparently left unlocked, and lets me into the room. It's roughly the same size as mine, maybe a tad bigger. The guitar is lying on the bed. I assume that's Rune's private one. Some books are laying on his desk, too. Hmm, I never would guess that he's the type to bring books to a camp. Other than all that, uh, other than that, all of Rune's private belongings must be already hidden in the wardrobe and drawers. What were you reading? Hmm? Oh, you mean those? Both are written by Paruki Mu. Really? Really? Come on now. Paruki Murakami. He's a Japanese fiction writer. Pamu. <laughs> I really love his style. It's very elegant and deliberate. I don't know how he does this, but in his novels, but in his novels, words flow like a calm, winding stream. There's something compelling about them. They have such an otherworldly atmosphere. Before reading his books, I never thought about becoming a writer. They inspired me a lot. I wonder if I could apply that style to some other medium. Let's say a role-playing game or a visual novel. Wait. You write? Oh, no, 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 no. Not yet. But I would love to try someday. Just, you know how it is. It's always hard to find the same, to find the time for another hobby. For me, it's hard to find a time for even just one hobby, but I won't say that out loud. When I moved to Norway and suddenly found myself in a big city, I promised myself to go out to take some photos every day. But I quickly had to go back on that promise. Too many responsibilities and late classes. If I manage to go out for a photo walk once every three days, I'm happy. I would never guess you're a type of person who plays visual novels either. Rune turns his head sideways. For a moment, I thought I saw him blush. But Rune? Blushing? Come on. Sometimes. I haven't played many, though. I just think the medium itself is interesting. For example, I like the idea of providing your own soundtrack to the scenes. That's not really something you can do with books. A visual novel, when done right, can be much more immersive, too. I've tried some, but none really stuck with me. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading in Rune's voice. I've tried some, but none really stuck with me. They were mostly horrors, though, and that's not my favorite genre for sure. Speak for yourself. And you play the guitar, too? I had no idea. Well, there's not much to speak of, sadly. I can play a bunch of chords and know a few songs, and that's pretty much it. I nod. I don't know if he's just being humble, though. Prior to now, I thought he just plays on a team and practices in his free time, and that's pretty much it. Now it turns out he reads Japanese novels, thinks of writing himself, and plays music. I know so little about him. Carvin, you won't, you won't laugh at me, right? He speaks quieter and softer than before. It's weird seeing him so meek all of a sudden. That's a huge contrast to his usual confident self. What? Of course not. Why would I? Thank you. You see, it's a bit embarrassing. Oh, wait. Why are you still standing? Sit wherever you like. Oh, um, thanks. I sit down on Rune's bed, as that's the closest piece of furniture. Rune, in turn, leans on the desk. From this perspective, he's even more imposing. So, frankly, my ambition is not to play, but to compose. I have a few songs written, but I'm not really happy with any of them yet. I don't know much about writing music, but somehow this seems even more ambitious than just playing songs. Is he really a deer or a goddamn cyborg? Are these a bit too many hobbies? I mean, how do you even find the time for all that? You have your team on top of your studies, you work on your own music, and you still think of working on a visual novel? Is it a bit crazy? God, sounds like me. Oh god, that sounds like me. I've got my I've got my part-time job that I work at. I write on the side, I manage my Twitter account, I manage my YouTube account, I make lots of videos. Man. I guess I do could do I do quite a lot as well. I guess I'm basically rune. <laughs> 
It gets a bit overwhelming sometimes, yes, but there's a key to finding the time. It's discipline. Amen to that. I plan my time ahead and keep a schedule and don't allow myself to slack off. That's kind of what I do. I enjoy it. It's fine. It's nice having a schedule to keep to. That's impressive and all, but I hope you don't push yourself too hard. I don't want to see you collapse from exhaustion. Don't worry, I'm a sturdy deer. This isn't that much, really, and I enjoy what I'm doing. If I wasn't, I probably wouldn't find the motivation. I'm not entirely convinced, but there isn't much more I can do for him now, is there? Okay, let's say I believe you. Could you play one of your songs for me? If you really want to hear one, but I can assure you that they're nothing special. Nope. And Alarm Chan is saying she doesn't want to hear any music right now. I'm going to save it right there, guys. Guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!